Now, if you're going to set a vehicle up for off-road touring, how much weight you can carry or your payload is a critically important part of that buying decision and vehicle setup decision. And in this video, I'm going to be explaining some of the important considerations you've got to think about when you set a vehicle up for off-road touring. I'm going to be using the Ineos Grenadier as an example, but what I've got to say is going to be applicable to vehicles of all types. <laughs> So let's start with some definitions then. The maximum a vehicle is legally allowed to weigh in Australia is called the GVM or gross vehicle mass. There are other definitions around the world. For example, the UK call it MAM or maximized, maximum authorized mass. So we can represent that over here, that's our GVM. Then we've got the unladen mass, which is how much the vehicle weighs when there's nothing in it, basically off the factory floor, ready to go. And that's called the curb or tear weight. Now the difference between the two is the payload and that is how much you can carry. And the simple formula for that is GVM minus curb and that gives you your payload. That's the amount of weight you can put in your vehicle. Now, unfortunately, there's not one definition of unladen or tear mass. Sometimes it's called tear, sometimes it's called um, curb, and you can see there's a lot of definitions here. I won't go through them except to say that because there's no one definition, if you are comparing vehicle type with vehicle type, do ensure that the, con uh, that the definitions are consistent or you make appropriate allowances. Now, what does the spec sheet say for the Ineos Grenadier? Well, it just lists station wagon um, and station wagon or utility wagon for two seats. It gives us a tear weight of 27.18 for the five-seater, 26.93 for the two-seater, and a gross vehicle mass of 3.550 for both. And they also state that's at 90% fuel, um, no driver, and all liquid, so basically the car ready to go. Um, Ineos have also given me this text down here, and I've put some highlights in as well. It doesn't say anything about approximate weight, but it says approximate performance, etc. So we can take this, in my view, as what the vehicle actually weighs. So, from the spec sheet, we've got GVM 3550, tear 2718, payload 832, and that's what the spec sheet says for the two-seater, similar, slightly higher um, payload. And remember, for the UK, 3,500 kilos, that's actually a little bit less than the 3,550. We'll come to that in a moment. Now, there's different grades of Grenadier, as there are with pretty much every vehicle. You've got your base Grenadier, you've got your Trial Master, which has got a lot of off-road goodies, and your Field Master, which is kind of the Luxo version. Now, here is the list of items which is added to a Grenadier to make it a Trial Master. You've got a whole bunch of things like uh, the Rough Pack, the Smooth Pack, um, a Tow Bar, etc., etc., um, a second battery. Now, I've done a rough calculation as to how much all of these weigh, so I've put the um, weighty parts here, and I reckon it's around about 80 kilograms of additional weight in a trial master versus a base model. Now, Gren um, Ineos have only given us weights um, for a station wagon, they haven't given us weights for the trial master. Is this normal? No, it is not. So here's an example from Toyota. There are six grades of 300 series from the GX through to the GR Sport. And Toyota have given six different tear weights because each of those six trim levels have different options, electric this, electric that, um, cross axle lockers, etc., etc. Therefore, they have different weights. And actually, there's a difference of 135 kilograms from the base GX model through to the GR Sport. So this is why I always say to people for off-road touring, start with the low-spec model because you'll actually generally get more payload because the GVM is the same. And the payload ranges from 650 to 785 kilograms kilograms. Now crucially in this spec sheet there's three differences to the Ineos one and this is more typical. Different tears per trim as I've explained. They say that the weights are approximate not down to the um, kilogram and in fact they've rounded it to the nearest five kilograms whereas the Ineos weights are very very precise. Let's take an example from Jeep. So here's a base spec Jeep um, Wrangler, and that's an Overland model, 2460 GVM, comes out at a payload of 560 kilograms. Now, if we look at the Rubicon model, this is the off-road uh, version, and there's a whole bunch of extra off-road goodies on it, and that comes to 92 kilograms. Now, that is not my estimate, because on the spec sheet, it says that the um, tear weight is 1992, so 92 kilograms more. They've upped the GVM a bit, and therefore, 570 kilograms is the payload. This is normal, and by the way, um, Jeep have not provided a definition of tear, so black mark for them there. But that's the sort of thing I would expect to see from a car manufacturer. 
So what do INEOS have to say on this subject? Well, they say that um, they don't provide weights at each trim level, but only for the most basic version that is offered. Well, they're a company, they can do whatever they like, I disagree with that. Um, so the, the weights reflect a vehicle that has a far lower specification than a trial master and is listed lighter as a result. So that proves that the weight we see in the spec sheet is not a trial master weight. How much does a trial master weigh? Well, I calculated it, that's all we can do. Um, and they say we can't provide specific for the weights of the individual additional features, etc., etc. Well, that would be nice, but what we really want is just the total weight of a trial master over and above the base model. So if INEOS can't do that, fortunately, owners can. So this is the vehicle I had on test, and I said to the owner um, during the test, oh, can you put it on a weigh bridge on your way home? And he goes, already done that. And this is what people want to do. This is why weights are so important. I cannot stress to four-wheel drive manufacturers and people out there, Weights are critically important. You have to get this right. You have to help people. Don't hold back on the information. Anyway, came onto scales at 2940 kilograms, 70% fuel, which is 222 kilograms more than the spec sheet of 27118. So let's break that down a little bit. Here's a list of accessories the owner had fitted above trial master spec. So what we do, we take the 2718, we add the 80 kilograms that I've calculated for trial master spec, comes to 2798, we add a third 112 kilograms of these accessories and we come to 2910 and we find we're 30 kilograms short of um, the 2718 claim. So this indicates to me that the base grenadier is probably 30 kilograms plus heavier than the spec sheet. You're going, 30 kilograms, what does that matter? It matters, it really matters. I mean, think about it this way, marketing people. If you were marketing a car which had 200 um, kilowatts and it was found to have only 180 kilowatts, the sports car people would not be happy. And similarly, um, no one's gonna be happy to find that the vehicle weighs 30 kilograms more than um, what, what they thought it did, let alone 100. Now, if we go back the other way, we take 2940, we remove that 112 kilograms of accessories and we come out with a tear weight of 2028, 20, which gives us that in trail master trim, the five seat Grenadier seems to have a payload of around 722 kilograms. Now, this is my calculations. It's a bit speculative, so I'm not saying this is the exact number. I'm giving you the principle and the process here so you can figure it out for yourself. Now I had another car come to me, um, just uh, contacted through my Facebook page and this time it was weighed by one of the mobile weighing operators and that was 294 kilograms over the claimed weight with 100% fuel. So let's break that down. There's about 160 kilograms worth of gear on that above trial master spec. So we add um, I, that to that, that to that, and we come out still probably 50 kilograms short of where of, of what it was on the way bridge. So that indicates that the base grenadier is 50 kilograms heavier than what the spec, spec sheet says. And it also indicates that um, the trial master um, probably in this, by these calculations, has a payload of about 723 kilograms um, or thereabouts. Third car um, came to me, one, one of my patrons, um, and this came in at 2940, exactly the same as the, as the first car. Um, so we run through the numbers for that, had 90 kilograms of extra stuff there. So we come out at 52 kilograms short of um, the, the weight. So again, that's indicating that the base grenadier weight 2718 is probably 40, 50 kilos short. Um, and we go backwards from that and we come up with a payload of around about 700-ish um, for the trial master. Again, these figures are not precise, just to give you an indication. So I put all of that together and said, okay, what are the real, real numbers? This is what the spec sheet says. These numbers I've highlighted in blue um, is what I think is really the case. I reckon that the um, base grenadier is under underspecified um, on terms of payload by 50 kilos. So we add 50 to that. We add another 80 to the trial master and field master, well, probably 30-ish, something around um, that nature as well. So Enios's view paraphrased is, look, there's so many options available. It's better just to give a base weight and people take it to the weigh bridge and they might look at other weights in the future. Now, I disagree with that. You can't buy a car, then go and find out how much it weighs. That is not the way these things work. You need to understand how much payload you've got before you buy the car because it is a critical part of the buying decision. It's, it's hard to stress this enough. Anyway, let's do a bit of a payload comparison. So the trial master here, um, 
has about 80 kilograms of off-road goodies, right? So we'll work on that. So if we have a payload of let's say 700, we add 80 to that. For a comparison to other vehicles, we work on a figure of 780. And here's some of the other vehicles on the market. And as you can see, the payload is pretty comparable to them. So whilst I'm going through and I'm criticizing what Ineos have done with payload figures, the actual payload is pretty comparable to the competition. Because remember, um, very few of these cars have twin axle lockers, the GR Sport, LC300 does, but then that's only got a 650 payload. And again, you've also got to go back and look at the definition of tear weight. So it's complicated, this weights business. That's one thing I want you guys to take away from this. So it's, it's not too bad, but because the, the Grenadier is marketed built on purpose, etc., etc. I think it should have a higher payload than all of these. It should be in the order of eight to 900 kilograms and it's not, but it is market comparable. A couple other points, roof loads. Um, it's 150 kilograms dynamic, i.e. moving, which is good for a modern vehicle and 400 kilograms um, plus static, which again is very good. You don't often see a static weight um, mentioned for vehicles. So I think that's great. Remember everyone, roof load is part of payload. So you can't put 700 kilograms in the car and then add on another 150. That 150 comes out of that 700 I was talking about. And um, also please remember that it includes the rack weight. So the 150 kilogram you got here, if you put a 50 kilogram rack on, you've got 100 of payload left on the roof. I've got another video where I go through all of the roof loading stuff in detail. Now we come on to axle loads, which is the limit of the rear axle, how much you can load to it and how much you can load the front axle. And on the Grenadier, uh, the rear limit is very, very good. It's 2150, that's extremely high. So you shouldn't have any problem towing and overloading the rear axle, particularly as it's got a short overhang there. The front axle, well, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Now to do that, we're gonna need to understand a bit about um, weight balance and dynamics. So here's two lines. Um, anything you add behind this red line over here will increase the rear axle load by more than the weight and it will reduce it. So for example, if we put 100 kilograms um, on the table, we might put 130 on the rear axle and take 30 off the front axle. Anything you put between the red lines will increase the weight on both front and rear axles. And anything you put in front of this red line will increase the weight on the front axle by more than what you add um, and take it off the rear axle. So for example, if we were to add a winch of 30 kilograms and I put it about here, you'd add about 37 kilograms to the front axle and you'd remove 37 uh, kilograms of weight off the rear axle. That's the, that's the leverage there. Okay, now what we also find is we add these two together, we come up with a sum of 3817, and that is 267 kilograms over the gross vehicle mass, which is actually really good. Some manufacturers are a bit sneaky. They make the gross vehicle mass merely the sum of the front and rear axle loads, and that means you can't have any load flexibility front and rear. So I like that, um, that that's been done by Ineos, and it also opens up the way for GVM upgrades later on. I've got another video about GVM upgrades if you want to understand the four types of GVM upgrade. Now let's take a look at customer cars. So we'll take that Grenadier again. So car one, 14, and car three, in fact, 1420. Uh, you can see that um, there was a massive 730 kilograms left on the rear axle alone. That's huge. Front axle, getting close. Um, and this was with no one in the car, by the way. The second, uh, sorry, car number three, 1432 on the back and 1554 on the front, 93% used um, and a it's getting um, pretty close at the front there. Now, when the owner and wife got in, they pushed up the front axle to 1634, which was within 30, 30 kilos of the front axle limit. And then two heavier people got in and it actually pushed the front axle limit over. So this is indicating that the front axle load limit is actually probably too low if you've got a bar, a winch, and um, you are fairly, above averagely heavy people, or you put more stuff in the car. So I think that's an issue. So let's take a look at the effects of passengers then. If we add 160 kilograms in the front seat, you're gonna add about 85 to the front axle and about 75 to the rear. Um, and therefore, if we take around 1540 as a customer weight, we add 85 to that, then you, you're within 42 kilograms um, of, the, uh, of the front axle load limit if you've got a bar winch, etc. 
If we add 160 to the rear seat, that's going to be about 35 on the front axle, about 125 um, on the rear axle. So basically, if you've got a bar and a winch on your trial master and then you start adding stuff, you're going to get very, very close to the front axle limit very, very quickly, which is not good. Now, in case you think I'm picking on the Grenadier, I'm not. This is actually a common problem. I want to stress um, that this is not specific to the Grenadier. As I said at the front, the principles are general. Here is an absolutely terrible offender. Um, Nissan NP300 Warrior took a standard um, Warrior, attempted, sorry, standard NP300, attempted to make it better for off-road, didn't really in my view. Um, and what I found when I put it on the scales was that the front axle load limit was 1,320 kilograms, and with nobody in it, 1260 as you can see on the scale so you put two heavy people in the front and bang you straight over the load limit let alone anyone in the back yet this vehicle is marketed as an off-roader they just didn't increase the front axle load limit and it's pointless and by the way if you are going to run a car youtube channel pr people do not necessarily appreciate you asking questions of this nature all right and trial master i uh, sorry quarter master now i took one look at the specs on this and Payload, this should be a thousand kilograms, absolutely no question about it. You can buy a Ranger, half the price, thousand kilos. It, you know, <laughs> payload's king it, when it comes to utes and utility vehicles. You can't carry, that's the first thing you look at, and then yes or no. So I'm, I'm quite disappointed with the payload on the Quartermaster. Now, this is where I'm going to delve into some speculation. Um, so you can choose to not watch this bit um, because it's just going to be me um, making educated guesses about um, things which I've looked at and engineers who I've talked to. So um, I reckon there's two, two explanations here. One, payload was never a priority, never cared about it. Two, it was a priority and something went wrong in the Grenadier design process. Now, we know that Ineos stated 1,000 kilograms was a target because I looked it up and um, Steen Close, 2020, wrote about it. He was on a Zoom call with Ineos people and he said that the target's a 1,000 kilogram payload. I called Steen and he said, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, they were definitely talking about that, etc. cetera. Um, Mike Costello, writing in uh, Car Expert, also said that um, payload must be at least a tonne before the road cars are signed off. So there was this intent to go for a tonne payload and you, we need that in Australia for tax reasons, we need that in the UK for tax reasons, and that's what it should be to be market competitive. But it's not, so what went wrong? Two things went wrong in my, in my view. Um, well, clearly a payload there. We and I remember had the limit of 3,500 um, kilograms as GVM or, or maximum vehicle load. Why? Because in the UK, above that, it becomes a commercial vehicle. There's speed limit restrictions, there's license restrictions, etc. probably tax things that change as well. In Australia, you're okay to drive a vehicle up to four and a half tonnes on a car license in the UK. Um, it's three and a half tonnes. So that, that was the limit there. Now, here's another little point. I had a look through spec sheets for um, many different grenadiers in different countries, seven or eight of them, and the only one which doesn't have a 35 kilogram GVM is Australia. We get 35.50. Why is that? Now, here's my suspicion. It was like, I think they realised how heavy the car was and they realised how payload sensitive Australians are to it and they really wanted extra payload. So it's probably this fight between the local people and in your head office saying, look, could you just make the, the GVM 3700? And they go, no, no, absolutely not. We've done all the designs, calculations, we sign off for that. Uh, 3600, no, no. And, if, and they came out at 3550. That's why our payload in Australia has snuck up by 50 kilograms compared to the rest of the world. Even New Zealand have a 3500 um, payload. Um, it's only Australia that I can see we get the extra 50s. And, and that to me tells a story. Now, I reckon that the original design target for the Grenadier weight was 2450 or below, right? Um, because that would have given you the 1,000 kilogram payload. But what went wrong? Now, let's take a look at the, um, at the old Defender. That had a tear weight of 2050 kilograms, and then you add a tonne to that, 3050, easy, well within. But the Grenadier, which is a modern design, not something dating from the 1980s, weighs 2750, and it's essentially, you know, more or less the same size of vehicle capability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, why? Where did that extra 700 kilograms come from? Well, there's two answers to that. The first one is weight adds weight. It's it's what we call a vicious circle. So let's say that you've got a car and then you've um, you make the chassis a bit stronger and heavier. 
then you need a bigger engine to pull it and then because the engine is um, this larger and it's going to draw more fuel you need a bigger fuel tank and then that takes more space um, and then you've got to make the suspension more robust and heavier duty and it just becomes a vicious circle weight adds weight and then the reverse is true as well epitomized um, by Lotus um, just add lightness by Colin Chapman now what in particular makes vehicles heavy well there's a bunch of things safety is probably um, a massive one so it's not just the weight of an airbag which you know every kilogram counts but it's also the crash structures as well they are heavy and look at a modern car's um, a and b pillars and they're really thick um, so rollover protection etc um, older cars you just don't have that and also in a modern car you sit further away from the doors because you've got sill protection and that means to get back the interior space you need to make the car bigger etc etc so safety is, is an absolute weight adder to a vehicle then we've got convenience my Defender TD5 didn't have power windows, it was really basic inside. Now everyone has got power windows, actually the base grenadier doesn't have power windows, but you know you get a lot of electric stuff and you get infotainment and you, all of that modern convenience adds, adds weight. Emissions. Modern cars have to deal with things like DPF, um, diesel particular filter, add blue. The, the Grenadier is carrying around, I think, 17 litres um, of add blue, plus all the, you know, that probably 25 kilograms are right there. Um, catalytic converters, exhaust gas recirculation, all of this stuff, it, it just adds extra weight. And it also makes packaging more difficult because the engine's larger as well. And you need a bigger engine, but, you know, it just becomes complicated. Automatic transmissions, no one uses manual um, anymore. Why would they? They're heavier though, that's a problem. Um, NVH, noise, vibration, harshness. When I bought my Defender TD5, I added soundproofing to it. That added weight to the vehicle. No one does that anymore. You don't need to do that with the Grenadier, but it's built in and that adds weight compared to the older vehicles. Um, and bigger engines, that Defender had a 90 kilowatt engine. That is less than half the power of the Grenadier. Now, the bigger the engine, sorry, the more power you need, the heavier the engine. It's, it's that, that simple. Um, and if Enios had brought out a pro rata powerful engine compared to a 90 kilowatt, maybe 110, 120, something like, like that, they'd have been panned as it being too slow. Um, and they wouldn't be able to sell it. So they needed to put a powerful engine in, but that is unfortunately heavy. So it's just a simple fact. You can't build a vehicle with a one ton payload, which has, which is road legal, emissions legal and everything else that weighs only two tons. It, it, it can't be done. Those days are gone and don't be mad at um, Enios because they haven't done it. But here's where I think they could have done better. Commitment to design principles. Now, clearly they had a focus on robustness. Now, I applaud that. But we want a robust vehicle, we want a reliable vehicle, I'm all for that. But it is useless to me and everyone else if it cannot carry. So you've got to come back a bit on the robustness and compromise some other points here. Separate chassis, that would have weighed more. Now this is not something I feel should be compromised because you want a separate chassis, there's various reasons for it. But for me, the biggest reason is you're gonna build a ute version, you wanna take the tray off the back and put something else on as I've done with my own ute. So I wouldn't compromise that. Live axles. That adds weight. And this is where I'm going to be here, Reddit. I'm going to say the Grenadier should not have had live axles. It should be independent suspension. Yeah, okay, people are screaming. That's fine. Here's my reasoning. Independent suspension vehicles work off-road very, very well. And I give you Land Rover. Now, I've been critical of Land Rover, but the Defender, the Discovery, etc., they are amazing off-road vehicles and they are fully independent suspension. So it works. And in fact, I think that they're actually going to be better off-road than, than the um, Grenadier. Robustness is, I, I would agree that a live axle is more robust, but it, uh, independent can be made to be robust. There are independent vehicles out there like the um, Bushmaster, etc. That's pretty strong. Y62 Patrol, the Land Rovers, you know, they're not weak vehicles, so it can be made to work. And it, you wouldn't have compromised off road performance, you'd have saved some weight. And an indication of where they weren't really thinking about weight is the split door at the back. Now, Toyota went from a split door on the 200 series to a single door on the 300 series. And I asked them why, because everybody loves that door on the 200 series and they said weight saving. And I haven't asked Land Rover, but I bet that's the same reason the same change was made from Discovery 4 to Discovery 5. Yet Enios have a split door, which is a pretty pointless split door in my view, but they've done it. So I don't think they were really thinking about weight. 
And also the low front axle load, to me, that's kind of something that was locked in and then they realized it was, it was gonna to be too low um, later on. And who knows what else is gonna be there. So here's my view, and I think the GVM was fixed at 3,500. The tear went up and payload got squeezed um, and here we are, less than a thousand kilograms. Now, here's what I'd like to see happen to fix this. One, um, ground clearance. In my other video, I talked about the fact that they're claiming 264 mm ground clearance. It is literally not by my tape measure, anyone else's tape measure, and uh, Australian design rules. Just put, this, put it back to 248, so it's a, it's a truthful and realistic measure. Um, specify 18 tears and payloads. It's not that hard. All you've got to do is just weigh six vehicles, and you've already weighed about um, three, in fact, you've got to re-weigh them, and then just um, pro-rata it, and just add on to the, to the other variants. Then people know what they're buying. Really simple to do. I don't understand why that's so hard. Um, and then I want to see the front axle re-rated to about 1800. You can leave the GVM the same. You could even maybe de-rate the rear axle by 50 because it's so high, but that front axle, I think, is going to be a bit of a problem for people. All right, so to summarise then, unladen weight per se is not necessarily a, a problem um, for off-road performance, it is for fuel consumption, etc. It's actually good to have a high unladen weight for towing uh, because for stability. The issue here is payload. And the Grenadier payload is actually okay, but it is not as good as the spec sheet indicates. And it seems to be overstated, but Ineos don't want to provide weights for each trim level, at least not yet. Now, the rear axle load's really, really good. For you towers, that's going to work out very well for you. The front axle is low. Roof load limit is low, etc. The sum of axle loads, every, everything else checks out pretty well. And remember, all wagons have similar weight issues. Don't be looking at this video going, oh, I'm not going to buy a Grenadier, I'm going to buy something else. It's not going to be any better. You're just going to have to work within this. And in fact, the Grenadier is actually above um, average for a lot of these weight limits here. And fundamentally, um, I actually would happily trust a Grenadier based on everything I've seen, owners I've talked to, my drive, the research I've done, etc. And I think it's one of the best touring wagons uh, as a base on the market. It's just something you've got to be aware about with weights as you would for any, any vehicle on the market. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.